Uh, Mr. Patrick Tay asked about the wage credit scheme. A total of more than $4.7 billion in wage credit payouts has been given out to employers from 2014 to 2017, and this includes the recent payout in 2017, where more than $0.6 billion of wage credit payouts were made to over 85,000 employers. Over this same period, which is from 2014 to 2017, IRS denied or clawed back 5.57 million of WCS payouts. IRS found a total of over 1,000 cases where employers either gave false information or contrived to fraudulently obtain payouts that they did not qualify for or which were otherwise non-compliant. The vast majority of these payouts were denied upfront with the remainder being clawed back by IRS largely within a year. Uh, these figures cover cases of attempted fraud which IRS detected and acted against over the four-year period. I think the media had reported the figures rec recently, but they were not a recent phenomenon. So the 1,000 cases were all acted upon over the entire period of the wage credit scheme since it started. But IRS recently published these figures to caution employers against attempts to abuse or game the system. Uh, Mr. Patrick Day and Mr. Pritam Singh asked how government agencies go about investigating fraudulent claims. The Minister for Higher Education and Skills has just covered Skills Future, and so I will touch on WCS and PIC. Essentially, uh, IRS uses a risk-based approach to safeguard against abuse. And this methodology is used for all IRAS programs, including WCS and PIC. All potential WCS payouts and PIC applications are first checked up front against a set of predetermined criteria for signs that indicate possible gaming. And this is complemented by the use of analytics, field intelligence, and other sources of information, including a whistleblower program. Uh, cases that are assessed to be of a higher risk profile say claim amounts that are not commensurate with the scale of the business are subject to more detailed investigation. For WCS, this may entail examination of supporting documents like pay slips and bank statements and conducting phone interviews to verify the authenticity and the accuracy of the submitted wage increases. For PIC, this may entail examination of transaction details and verification of documents such as suppliers, invoices and payment evidences. IRS may also conduct field visits to understand the applicant's business, for example, how the PIC equipment is used in the business. IRS will continue to take strict enforcement and legal actions against those who abuse the schemes. This includes disqual disqualifying offenders from other government schemes and taking legal action against such offenders. Officers can be charged, offenders can be charged under the Penal Code or the Income Tax Act for abusing the schemes. And to date, IRS has prosecuted 13 cases for fraud under the PIC scheme and one case under WCS. More generally, MOF undertakes periodic reviews of government schemes to ensure that they are relevant and achieve the purposes that they are designed for. Programs which continue to serve their purpose will be retained. Others which are intended to be time limited will be terminated at their end date. Yet others may be continued with revised criteria based on the actual experience of running the schemes and an assessment of the scheme's overall effectiveness, which includes a weighing of the scheme's benefits against its administrative costs. 